This is General David Olvin. He is the current Chief of Staff of the US Air Force. Well, he must be, look at all those decorations. A few days ago, on the 13th of June 2024, he was in an Air and Space Forces Association event and someone asked a question. What are the service's plans for the NGAD, the next generation air dominance fighter? Well, the answer that everybody was expecting was it is a vital asset that will assure air dominance for decades to come and the program is on time and within budget. So this is what everyone was expecting him to say. But, but, this is what he said. The deliberations are still underway. There's been no decision made. We are looking at a lot of very difficult options that we have to consider. What? What, what deliberation is he talking about? Is the NGAD not going to happen anymore? Okay, if you're watching this, you probably already know what the NGAD is. And by the way, we are talking about the Air Force NGAD, not the Navy's NGAD. That is another program entirely. And that one, it is likely going to be postponed indefinitely. The United States Air Force in 2014, even before then the F-35IOC was declared, started working on the concept for an F-22 replacement. I'm sure that you know that they came up with the idea of a family of systems with the principal component being a manned aircraft called the penetrating counter air. And I'm sure you have heard before that it should include broadband stealth and all sort of science fiction technologies that excite the average nerd. Nobody will have missed that between 2020 and 2023 at least three technology demonstrators have flown and their performance was considered amazing. You shut up. And we were all waiting for the announcement of the contract for the full-scale development that had to be assigned uh, more or less now. And then, instead of the contract out of the blue, Alvin said that the deliberations are still underway, there's been no decision made, and so on. So, what was the change? What could have possibly downgraded a program like the NGAD from a absolutely vital program to a, uh, well, maybe. So the first place I looked into was the wallet. The Air Force is in the process of preparing its fiscal year 26 program objective memorandum, which is a precursor document for the budget. Believe it or not, even the richest Air Force in the world has competing necessities. There are programs that are already ongoing and need to be sustained, otherwise immense efforts will go to waste. Programs like this. This is the B-21, what Northrop calls the first sixth generation aircraft. This aircraft is key for the United States Air Force and its doctrine. It's not just a stealth bomber, it's designed to be a reliable and survivable node on the network, which is the key component of the US doctrine to fight and prevail in the 21st century. This program is, strangely, on time and within budget, but it is very expensive. The aircraft is flight testing now, and it is not far from being ready to enter service. So, a large investment is needed right now. And then there is the new Sentinel ICBM. It is manufactured by the same Northrop Grumman, but in this case, the cost ballooned by over 50%, prompting a program review. The missile is sorely needed because the Minuteman 3 is quickly approaching the end of life, but the program delay is two years and mounting, and the Air Force cannot contemplate the idea of leaving all the strategic deterrent in the hands of the Navy. Moreover, the Air Force seems to be sharply focused on getting ready for a fight in the Western Pacific, and this costs money. The new bases, the new logistic capabilities, an entire new infrastructure. It is a hardly visible effort, but it is extremely important. And the NGAT itself is going to be extremely expensive, more than 200 million a piece, according to the current estimates. There is simply not enough budget to do everything. 
So they may want to delay or in the worst case cancel the NGAD program because the Air Force believes other programs are more important. After all, with the F-22 upgrades and the F-35 already in service in large numbers, there are plenty of excellent assets available already. So this was a good explanation and I made myself a cup of tea. But there was something in the background that didn't sound quite right. There has been a lot of investments in the aircraft so far. It was included in plans and strategies. You don't want to give it up so easily, do you? So I came back to the news article, I checked other outlets, and yes, there was another explanation. The CCA, the Collaborative Combat Aircraft. The CCA is the program to build unmanned combat air vehicles that will team with fighter pilots, covering several roles, integrating or replacing the crewed combat aircraft. The US plan is to give every F-22 or F-35 pilot the capability of coordinating two UCAVs, on average with six considered to be the maximum viable. However, with the cost of the program levitating to 30 million apiece, the CCA is no longer treatable. Despite the hype, the capability of giving the aircraft enough autonomy in the real world, not in a simulation, to be really useful is a very tall order. A lot of money will be sunk in that program and Olvin himself said that the current CCA won't stay in service for long because the technology is evolving so fast that they will need to build something new in the not so distant future. So even more money will be needed. It is quite clear, at least to me, that the Air Force is placing a lot of trust in the CCA. There also have been some interesting war games centered on a Taiwan invasion and featuring the CCA whose results have been released to the public. It is a great story, but we will cover that on a different video. So it seems that the unmanned aircraft is considered more promising than the manned one. And honestly, this seems strange to me as well. In an organization dominated by pilots, are they choosing to focus on a non-piloted platform? From a cultural point of view, it seems quite strange. You may say that the men and the women shaping the Air Force doctrine and strategy are selfless patriots, but that would be the first time in world history that an organization is consciously making itself obsolete. So why is this happening? Why the NGAD is not considered to be so important anymore? This was unforeseeable just a few weeks ago. The budget constraint doesn't seem to be real, at least to me, since when the United States doesn't find the money for a military system that is deemed really important. Look at the F-35, that survived a decade of terrible mismanagement, whose consequences are still with us today. If the NGAD is as important as the F-35, it should receive the same treatment. Okay, seriously, to be honest, I see only two reasons. The first is that the Air Force expects to fight China in a very short time, four or five years. In this case, it is not worth investing massively in a radically new system, but focus on what can be achieved in a short time frame. Aim to 60, more F-35s, and the logistics to sustain the fight in the Western Pacific. The second, and I sort of start believing that it is the more likely, it is that they bite more than they could chew, like they did with the F-35 at the beginning. And they are only now realizing the extent of the enterprise they embarked on. So a rethinking of the program may be needed to make the next US fighter something realistically achievable within the century. However, considering the Navy position on the FAXX, and now the Air Force doubts about the NGAD, it seems that the sixth generation is not going to be around us as fast as it was sold. So, as usual, I guess we just need to wait and see. Thank you very much for getting this far into the video. It's a honor and a privilege having had your time. An enormous thank you to all those who are supporting the channel on Patreon by being a member or by any other mean. You are absolute stars and you are essential to this operation. And for those who are not supporting the channel but are regular viewers, if you can, only if you can, please just consider donating in the way that is best suited to you. 
You can also support the channel by buying a model from Air Models. There is an affiliate link below. I have a small percentage and there is no extra cost for you. So this is the end of this short video. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.